good evening one and all today in our botany session we are going to learn about an important topic what you call it as the flower under the chapter morphology of flowering plants why we have selected this topic reason being important regarding your neat exam the terminology here are very important like aestivation placentation much more we have to learn in this topic next thing this topic is interlinking with the one more chapter that is a sexual reproduction in flowering plants there you will learn regarding androecium gynoecium means essential part of the flower but what are these let's uh, study under the topic the flower now to explain this topic you know that this is a flower can i call it as the reproductive unit of angiosperms right and which reproduction here we are discussing about here we are discussing about sexual means of reproduction can i call flower is an essential part of the plant which plant we are discussing flowering plants true flowering plants which we call it as angiosperms right so here there is a reproductive unit and which reproduction we are discussing here sexual means of reproduction now after this let's see what are the parts of the flower if i am taking the parts which are from the outermost and towards the inner side then outermost part this one that you call it as a sepal and inner one inner to sepal what we are having petal and still inner to that this part you call it as stamen and innermost that you call it as pistil or the carpel right so not one much more is there just i am indicating one part from one whorl one whorl i am talking about the word whorl means ring of such sepals ring of such petals ring of such stamens ring of sir such type of members of the flower which you call it as pistils right so in a typical flower if i am saying in a typical flower how many whorls are there there are four whorls typical flower i mean to say that which is carrying all the characters means all the features are there which we are assuming and it is there sometimes in the nature as well the typical word is related to that if i am taking the whorls of the sepals whorls of the sepal means whorl one whorl one circle of the sepal that we call it as calyx the whorl the complete ring of the petals that we call it as corolla of stamens we call it as androecium of pistils or the carpels we call it as gynoecium right now next important thing these two whorls that we call it as non essential or you can call it as accessory part of the flower now we are discussing the flower i must say part of the flower now these two whorls or the members in that whorl you call it as essential part of the flower why essential because due to the androecium and gynoecium sexual reproduction takes place whereas corolla calyx means petals and sepals they are helping in the reproduction how they helps in the reproduction but itself they cannot involve in the sexual reproduction like the sepals they are supporting the plant from the lower side like if i am showing like this this is a whorl of sepals 
and in the bud stage it is going to protect the flower right in the floral bud stage so what is the outer one sepals then inner to that petals then still in the inner side to that third one that is of androsium innermost is of gynosium like this ring by ring they are arranged and in typical flower how many such whorls are there four whorls are present so this is about the parts of the flower now what we have to discuss now the all the terms related to flower first of all types of flower based on the sexuality of the flower mirosity of the flower and even the position of the various you can say floral appendages with respect to the gynosium and much more about that terms we have to deal with let's see the next topic here if i am discussing based on the sexuality of the flower then based on that thing you are having two types of flower one is the bisexual another is what unisexual what do you mean by bisexual flower bi means what thing two sexual means the sexes male and the female just now in the previous slide i mentioned you the gynosium this is the female part androsium is what thing male part right so here if i am discussing bisexual that means both the male and the female sexes are on the same flower see that i am using the word flower not the plant right so be careful because when we are taking plant if we are having male female flowers on the same plant then we call the term monoecious right if we are taking if i repeat this point if male female flower are on the same plant that means i am talking about monoecious type flowers male female flowers are on same plant monoecious type if male female are on different plants then you call it as dioecious condition now let's see again what is a bisexual flower which is having both the essential parts means the androsium and gynosium on the same flower that flower you call it as bisexual unisexual means it will have either female or it has the male part or you can say either it is having gynosium or it is having the androsium such type of flower you call it as unisexual what can be the example of the bisexual flower like hibiscus is there right so this is very common type of flower which will be there in all the seasons right then unisexual flower what can be the example let me to quote here like papaya is there right and even in case of the maize unisexual but keep in your mind the maize male female means male female flower are on same plant and such plant you call it as what condition monoecious condition whereas papaya the male male female flower these are on different plants and such condition you call it as dioecious condition right so monoecious and dioecious are related to plant bisexual unisexual are related to flower so just now we have learned the types of flower based on the sexuality of the flower either it is a bisexual flower or it is a unisexual flower coming to the next types based on the symmetry we are having three types of the flower first is what actinomorphic flower let's see what do you mean by actinomorphic flower can you see here red line red line is indicating the plane of symmetry so this red line is passing from this direction even it is passing from this direction diagonally right so what it means if we are cutting it any radial plane any out of all these plane any plane if we cut definitely we will get two equal halves from any plane right so that type you call it as or such flower you call it as actinomorphic flowers 
and can I call it as they are having radial symmetry. What will be the example of that? That is mustard, the tura and chili. Very important. Whatever example given in your NCRT book, that's very, very important to learn. So actinomorphic symmetry is what? In any plane, if you are cutting, you will get two equal halves. Such type of flower you call it as actinomorphic flower and symmetry you call it as radial symmetry. And where it is present like mustard, the tura and chili. Now coming to the next part, zygomorphic. Zygomorphic, if you try to cut it into two equal halves, there will be only one plane of symmetry. That's why you call it as zygomorphic. Only one plane of symmetry will be there. Only in one plane you have to cut it. Only then you will get the two equal halves. Such type of symmetry you call it as bilateral symmetry. And which type of plants will show that? P, Gulmohar, Bean, Acacia. These all members belongs to which family? These all belong to Fabaceae family members. Right? This is important. Here all example belongs to one family. What is that? Fabaceae family. Coming to the last type, asymmetric. Asymmetric means which cannot be cut into two equal halves. Right? Such type of flower you call it as asymmetric flower. What example will be there? Canna. Very important, canna flower, if you try to cut into two equal halves, you will not get the two equal halves out of it. So such type of flowers, based on symmetry, three types we have discussed, actinomorphic, zygomorphic and asymmetric type of flowers. Coming to the next basis on which we are classifying the flowers. This is based on their mirosity. The basis of this is what? Mirosity. What do you mean by mirosity? Mirosity means how members, how many members will be there in each world. That is telling about its mirosity. Means how many sapples are there in calyx? How many petals will be in corolla? How many stamens are there in androsium? How many carpels are there in the gynosium part? That will tell the mirosity of a flower. It can be 3 or multiple of 3 or it can be 4, multiple of 4. It can be 5 or multiple of 5. So such on based on such thing, 3 categories are majorly there. First, what is written over there? Trimeris. Trimeris means members there will be 3 or multiple of 3. Like 3 can be sapples or better I must say here, the uh, term here as a tepals. Why tepals? Because it is commonly found in the lily. And in lily, you will use the term tepals. What are tepals? Where there is no differentiation of, there is no differentiation of sapples and petals. Such type of structure that you call it as tepals and their complete world you call it as parient. So if I am talking in context to this flower where the example belongs to lily, here three tepals are outside, three are inside and rest of the members inside are the multiples of the three. Such type of flower you call it as trimeris and mostly here examples are from monocots. Mostly the members are of monocots. Like lily is one of the example from liliaceae family which is showing the trimeris condition. Whereas the tetrameris, pentamerus, this is in case of the dicots. So what is tetra? Tetra means four. Here the floral appendages. Floral appendages means the calyx or you can say the sapple, petals, stamens and the carpels. These you call it as floral, floral appendages. Now that if it will be 4 or it will be multiple of 4, such flower you call it as tetramaris. Here the example will come out for the mustard. Right? What will be the example here? Mustard is a very important common flower which is having yellow petals and it is having 
the tetramerous type of condition. I repeat, it is having tetramerous type of condition. Last is what pentamerous. Penta means the members in the world will be five or multiple of five. And here you can see that they are having petals in different patterns. We will discuss the later on the non-essential part of the flower. The petals can be fused, can be free or sepals can be fused, can be free after the types of the flower. So in case of pentamerous flower, the floral appendages means member in each world will be five or the multiples of five. Here the example belongs to the like Solanaceae family members. For example, under Solanaceae, like Solanum is there, right? Right, this is an example under Solanaceae family. Even the Fabaceae family, that is having the pentamerous condition. Right, so Fabaceae, Solanaceae family are pentamerous. Liliaceae is what thing? It will be trimerous and Brassicaceae family where mustard belongs, that is a tetramerous. So tetramerous, pentamerous condition belongs to the dicots, whereas the trimerous condition belongs mostly to the monocots, right. Now based on another criteria, types of the flower. Now what is the criteria on which we have classified these types of flower? Means with respect to insertion of the floral leaves on the thalamus. Right? Now let's see what is a thalamus and what do you mean by floral appendages? To explain you all these points here, what is that? If I am telling you here, the flower is the modified shoot. Flower is the modified shoot. Let's see what is a shoot first of all. If I am taking the stem part and the part from where the leaf originates, that point, that point you call it as what? Node. This is what thing? Node. And this place that you call it as internode. Now stem having the leaves, flower, floral buds, fruits, that complete you call it as one shoot. Stem is simply the this central part, this is a stem. But when stem is having leaves, other uh, you can say parts of the aerial parts like flower, floral buds are there, fruits are there, such complete structure you call it as what? Shoot. So I am saying that flower is a modified shoot which is on a stalk, that stalk you call it as pedicel. Don't confuse it with petiole. Petiole is a stalk of the leaf. Pedicel is a stalk of the flower, right? Now this, you can say stalk is swollen at the top. This swelling point, you call it as what? Thalamus or even you call it as receptacle, right? We call this as a condensed shoot where the internodes are very close to each other and leaves are here, the leaves are modified into floral appendages. What are the floral appendages here? Whatever is coming out, starting from outermost, what is outermost? You know that this is a sepals. So this is one node. Next node is what thing? From where petals are coming out. That node is very close it's compact, internode is going to be compact. So you cannot say that after just looking to such a close spacing, it seems to be like a one place, but it is not that, like that. They are having the different points of origin of all the floral appendages. So here will be the sepals, you know that these are the petals. Then inner to that, what will be there? There will be the stamens, right? And still innermost will be where, what is there? Ganesium will be there, right? Or I must say these are the carpels or the pistils. Right now I have drawn one. Then is there 
means before that androsium part which you call it as stamens. These all you call it as what thing floral appendages. So instead of leaves these floral appendages are coming out right. So now we are comparing what we are discussing here. We are discussing here the outermost floral appendages how they are ar arranged around this gynosium part which is innermost and central part. Based on that arrangement we are having three categories of flower right. Now let us start what do you mean by hypogynous flower. Hypo word is telling you what thing hypo means below, gyno means gynosium. When this gynosium part is going to be above and rest of the part are below to that can you see sepals are below then petals are there then stamens are there topmost is what thing gynosium part there ovary is at the top. So can I say other parts are below to the gynosium part such flower you call it as which type of flower hypogynous type of the flower can I say here ovary will be superior here the ovary is going to be superior here right. So here what can be the example for hypogynous flower mustard brinjal china rose right china rose belongs to malvasi family brinjal belongs to solanaceae family mustard belongs to brassicaceae family right indirectly they are representing their families. So here what type of ovary is there or what type of gynosium it is having superior type and what type of flower it is hypogynous. Be careful the ovary is given superior based on its position as compared to other floral appendages whereas flower name is given based on the other members which are below to the gynosium part. So this overall flower the floral appendages are arranged below to the gynosium that is why hypogynous type of flower. Next is what thing perigynous, peri means what thing around, around what thing around the rim of the cup which is formed by the thalamus part like here the thalamus is become like a cup and other floral appendages are on the rim at the rim of this cup like structure and the gynosium is inside either halfly or it is going to be completely inside but this cup is not going to touch it it is not going to touch it. So if it is half like this even it is a perigynous if it is more inside and the walls of the thalamus is not touching again it is perigynous type of the flower right. So let us see through the diagram perigynous I repeat where the floral appendages can you see this is the rim of the cup again here this is a rim of this cup and this ovary is half upside and half downside and if ovary is going to be complete embedded inside but walls are not touching still it is perigynous. If suppose the walls touch then it is becoming epigynous like in this diagram. So in your NCRD book these two diagram are for the perigynous type of the flower. What will be the example here? Here the example will be plum, peach and the rose and what type of ovary it is having? It is having half inferior ovary which type of flower? perigynous type of flower. Now epigynous, epigynous I already mentioned you the rim it is having the floral appendages but ovary is embedded inside it and the walls are touching completely of this thalamus completely covering that ovary. Such type of flower you call it as epigynous why? Because the other floral appendages are much higher than the position of ovary and ovary position is downside. So ovary of gynosium, ovary or gynosium can I say here it is going to be inferior which type of ovary you will find inferior type. What will be the example of the epigynous here? It will be the ray florets of sunflower will be there even it will contain the flower of 
dava even it is containing for cucumber all example what is on the board right now this is from your ncert book and very very important right so these are the three types of flowers based on the position of the outermost floral appendages with respect to the gynoecium now coming to the next part if i am discussing with you this is all what i discussed with you the different types of flower based on different different criteria like based on sexuality we discussed mirosity we discussed symmetry we discussed even just now we discussed regarding the position of floral appendages so we have discussed the types of flowers now if i talk about the parts of flower in detail parts of flower in detail and under that parts of flower if i am taking the non essential parts of the flower so you know already what is that calyx the whorl you call it as calyx and the corolla and member inside that you call it as sepals and here you call it as a petals i already spoke to you one more term that is the perianth perianth we are using the term in case of the lily so here right now i am discussing about calyx and the corolla so the sepals in the flower that will be green in color usually it will be green in color so what is the role of the sepal it is supporting the floral appendages when it is in a bud form when the flower is in bud form and being green somewhat it is help in the photosynthesis as well two terms related to the sepals what are that gamo sepalus and even the polysepalus just now during that discussion wherever you get the term gamo that means fused poly means what thing free right so can i say here sepals are not fused they are free like this fused means they are going to be fused with each other such type you call it as a polysepalous fused means you call it as let me to repeat once again fused condition you call it as gamo free you call it as what poly right so here first i have written for gamosepalous where the sepals are going to be fused sepals right and polysepalous means where the free sepals are there means they are not fused so this term you should link with the members of the calyx what are that sepals now coming to the petals what term you can apply here same like gamosepalous is there here will be what thing gamo petalous condition and opposite is what thing poly petalous condition and you should know the corolla can i say this is the colored part of the flower why it is colored because it is attracting the insect for the pollination right okay some uh, students are giving the answer pali i am happy that you are responding vini you have given the example for sunflower neem rose okay this is rose i can consider i hope so you have uh, given this example in context to the previous uh, topic right i hope so belong to that please respond me in which context you are writing these examples okay i will come back on this thing let's go with the topic right now so corolla is consisting of the petals which can be fused or means petals can be fused or it can be free i was saying that what is the role of corolla that helps in the pollination right being colored it is attracting the pollinators toward it and help in the pollination keep in your mind the corolla that varies in shape and color in different plants it will vary if i take the shape 
after fusing it can be like tubular in shape even it can be like a funnel shaped it can be bell shaped even it can be wheel shaped these all are the shapes we are discussing in context to the corolla right so these term you should know regarding the perian what terms will be there you call it as gamophilus or even you call it as gamo tapilus condition and free you call it as polyphilus or even you call it as poly tapilus condition so please keep in your mind when the term gamo is there that means fused under these topic poly means free means members are not fused right now we have to discuss next term what is that estivation estivation means that how the members of the same whorl they are arranged with respect to each other let's see the types of estivation right now we are having these four main type of the estivations the first type here you call it as what type of estivation velvet estivation what is there in velvet estivation when you will see the diagram there you will find the members of this whorl they are just touching each other they are not overlapped they are not overlapped they are just touching each other such type you call it as which type velvet type can you see they are just touching each other but when you see here one member margin is overlapped on the second members margin right before getting into much detail in which stage of the flower we can learn about estivation we can learn about the estivations during the floral bud stage fine and velvet type estivation where the members either sepals or petals right they are just close to each other in some they are fused but they are not overlap such type we call it as velvet and in what examples we can find this this is in case of calotropis fine next type what is given over there twisted type where the examples we will take for the lady's finger then we take for the cotton right and even one more example i am writing here that is a china rose but which type we are discussing twisted type what do you mean by twisted type here i repeat suppose this is one sepal or a petal this is a next member of that they are overlapped like this one margin of one member and margin of adjoining member they are overlapped and so on with the rest of the members such type you call it as a twisted type of the estivation this representation based on the transfer section this is a complete uh, bud stage we have shown based on the members of the flower now third type what is the third type third type you call it as imbricate type in imbricate what is there even in imbricate the overlapping will be there but it is not going to be having some fixed pattern like can you see here this is completely both the margins are inside in this member one is out one is in and here both are out so it is not having fixed pattern but when you see here there is a fixed pattern this member this margin outside this inside this member one margin outside one inside and so on so there is fixed pattern of overlapping in twisted but not is there in case of the imbricate what example will be here for this type the example here will be gulmohar right even here the example will be for the cassia very important zygomorphic we discuss these two example same is coming here but not p n bean p n bean will come in the last category what is that type 
this you call it as a vexillary type of aestivation don't confuse between velvet and vexillary in vexillary type you will find this arrangement not in the sepals this is find, found in case of the petals but what will be the example here here the example will be p b these four together are coming under zygomorphic type of symmetry but keep in your mind when we are discussing the aestivations the gulmohar and kesha is showing imbricate p and b is showing for what thing vexillary and keep in your mind whatever the upper side is there the upper side we have to represent by the dot what this dot indicates this dot is indicating the mother axis what this dot is indicating mother axis and can i say this is the posterior side which side it is posterior posterior means away from the observer suppose this is a stem and this is a flower right the parts of flower which is away from the observer means towards the mother axis of the stem that you call it as posterior side and which is toward the observer that you call it as anterior side so downside is indicating what thing anterior upper side is indicating the posterior and this side is indicating the lateral side right now coming back to this part can you see in the vexillary aestivation if you have written these example i'm clearing the space little bit for the parts right which type of aestivation we are discussing here vexillary type i am writing here the example will be p and the b now this the largest petal among all this is a posterior axis the largest among that you call it as vexillum and lateral part you call it as these two petal you call it as wings and this towards the anterior side which is fused that you call it as keels right so you should know about the terminology and such arrangement of petals you call it as which type of aestivation vexillary aestivation fine okay now let's see the next topic this is all about the aestivation right that's very important to go with that then after this you are having the essential part of the flower first what is that androecium androecium consists of two parts anther and the filament but what is the main reproductive part over there anther right so anther what is the feature of that it is bilobed and having having what two chambers like if i am cutting its transverse section you will find it like this like this you will find so these are the two lobes of that and having the sac over there these sac you call it as microsporangium plural you call it as microsporangia and this complete structure you call it as what thing stamen and stamen even you call it as micro sporophyll fine now what are the other terms related to the stamens let's see stamens can show adhesion and cohesion adhesion means when it is going to be fused with the other members other members of the flower androecium outside what is there immediately petals are there and in some cases tepals are there so it can be fused by the tepals in lily it can fuse with the petals in case of solanaceae family even in some cases with the sepals and inside what is there gynoecium if it is attaching to such other members of other worlds that fusion you call it as adhesion but when stamens are fused with each other that you call it as cohesion so we are taking first of all the adhesion in adhesion the first is what epi petals when it is fused with the petals what example brinjal petunia datura these are the example from solanaceae family right now epi sepalous condition when they are attached to what thing sepals 
This is not given in NCRT, but you should know even it can fuse with the sepal. What is an example? Grevillea is an example for this. This is again very, very important like this epipetalous condition why lily is very important asparagus as well but these examples are from liliaceae family. Gynandrous condition, gyno means with the gynosium when it is fused with the carpels. Example is what thing? Calotropis, right? So these terms are very very important when you will go through, right? But this is not given in NCRT but you should know even it is fused with the sepals. Coming to the next part, what is that? Cohesion of stamen means among themselves. Among themselves, when they are fused only by filament, not by the anther part, that you call it as Adelphi. What do you call it as? Adelphi. Right? I repeat, when stamens are fused only by filament, not by the upper part anther, that you call it as Adelphi. And if stamens are completely free, they are not fusing either by the upper part or by lower. Upper means anther, lower means filament. They are not going to be fused with each other at all. Such condition you call it as polyandrous condition, where the stamens are not fused, right? But once it is fused and showing cohesion which thing Adelphi then what terms are there if they fuse to make a one bundle complete then you call it as monoadelphus example here will be for hibiscus next diadelphus they will make two bundles after fusion here the example will be Fabaceae family right and polyadelphus many bundles they can form like small small bundles they will form after fusion such you call it as polyadelphus here poly means many so don't confuse with polyadelphus and polyandrous in polyandrous the stamens are completely free in case of polyadelphus they are fused by the filament but make many bundles what will be the example here here the example will be the citrus. Fine. So these are the terms related to the stamen. What are the other terms regarding that? The stamens can be of, they can vary in length. Based on the length, you are having tetradynamous condition. Then is what thing? Diadynamous condition. Tetradynamous condition is saying that the androsium or stamens there are total 6. Out of 6, 2 will be short and 4 will be long. Here example will be from Brassica means mustard belongs to Brassicaceae family. Diadynamous condition means here 2 will be short and 2 will be long. Here example will be salvia. Remember it is salvia not salvinia. Salvinia is a pteridophyte. Salvia is an angiosperm, right? Even the osimum. These are the example from the diadema. So two more terms you should know regarding androsium where stamens vary in their length, fine? Now coming to the next essential part of the flower which you call it as gynoecium. Gynoecium single member, you call it as pistil or you call it as carpel. How many parts it is having? Three major parts are there, stigma, style and ovary. What is this part? Stigma. What is this part? Style. And what is this part? Ovary. So here reproductive part is near to the uh, thalamus part, right? So Ovary inside is having ovarian chambers which we even call it as locules, right? And there is a presence of small flattened but swollen what structure? Placenta and bearing on that ovules, 
right. What are these structures now? Obules. So, these are the parts of gynoecium. The stigma is acting as a platform for pollens to land. Style is connecting the stigma to the ovary. And ovary is containing chambers for what thing? Ovules, right? Now, what terms are related to the gynoecium that we have to discuss? I am writing here only. If we are having the term apocarpus, that means here carpels are free. Here apo means what thing? Free, not fused. So, here carpels are free. Right? What can be the example here? Rose, lotus, they will, that will be the example. Then is what thing? Sin carpus condition. Sin means what thing? Fused. Again, carpels are not free, they are fused. What will be the example here? Tomato, mustard. These are the examples. I repeat, examples are very, very important being given in NCRT and frequently asked in the exam as well, right? So, these terms are related to the gynoecium. Now, coming to the last topic of today, that is the placentation. Placentation means arrangement of the placenta and on that ovules inside the ovary. We can check it by longitudinal section or by transverse section. As per you see in the first placentation where the arrangement of ovules in the ovary we see, it is the longitudinal section. And this type is showing what type of placentation? Marginal placentation. Example here is of P. Can you see here where the ovules are arranged? These are what thing? Ovules. This part is what thing? Placenta. Can I say here placenta is making the ridge over there? On which side? On the ventral side. Now, when you have to see the P pod, you will find it is like this. If you open it like this, the open part is the dorsal side and inside what will be there? Ovules and that part you call it as ventral side. Now, if I am writing here where the ovules are present on the ventral suture. What is a suture? The point of linking that you call it as suture. Two are there, it will be dorsal and ventral. But ovules are present on which side? Ventral suture side. This type of placentation you call it as marginal placentation. Coming to the next part, what is this type of placentation? This you call it as the exile placentation. And where it is present? It is present in case of the like citrus fruits like lemon, it is there. Even it is present in case of tomato, right? Even it is in case of China rose, right? So, it is an exile. How can you say there is an exile? Can you see this is an axil position? Axil means what thing? The central part and it is multi loculate, many chambers are there, right? This is multi locular, being it is having what thing? Septum over there, the wall, and where the placenta are present on the central and ovules are present on the center. Such placentation you call it as exile placentation, and in marginal, this is unilocular. You will find here even next I am talking about it will be unilocular, even it will be unilocular, even it will be unilocular type, fine. Now, exile placentation will be multilocular and these are the example and where the ovules are present on the central part. Now, when you see this thing, what type of placentation here? This you call it as a parietal placentation where the ovules are present, here the ovules are present on inner wall of the ovary, right? Can I say or they are present at periphery. When you will see here, 
this is the outer this is the inner so where the placenta is present this is a placenta where the placenta is present at the periphery and there there will be the presence of the ovules at the periphery such arrangement you call it as parietal placentation what will be the example here here the example is of argimon right and even for the mustard and this type of placentation you call it as free central placentation this type this you call it as a free central placentation right in the free central placentation what is there it seems to be like a axil placentation but this is multilocular this is unilocular right and the ovules are present on the axil so in the free central what will be the example over there dianthus and the primrose please do remember whatever example we are discussing all are from ncert book that's very very important now last placentation that you call it as a basal placentation because here it is unilocular number 1 number 2 very important single ovule is there rest of all the placentation many ovules you have seen but here will be only single ovule what will be the example here sunflower and the merry gold these are the examples right and keep in your mind here only this is multilocular rest all are going to be unilocular but sometime in case of this parietal placentation false septum can be formed and it is going to make it falsely multilocular and that will be by rapellum which you call it as false septum otherwise initially it will be unilocular so this is all about the terms related to the gynoecium so we have covered the flower we have we discussed initially about the non essential parts then we have discussed about the essential parts of the flower this is all for today thanks a lot student completed how much time it is